You can't get hired in the space industry unless you already have space experience. Is that true? No, no, it is not true. I can tell you for a fact that that is not true based on the career paths of many of my colleagues, based on my experience coaching clients who have come from outside the space industry and successfully transitioned inside the space industry. Hi, my name is Lara Forsick. I am the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical, and I am a space career coach. And I'm here to tell you the process of how to transition from outside the space industry to a space related career if you do not have any space related experience. Wait till the end to find out when this doesn't work because there are times when this does not work, but I'm here to tell you when it does. First, I wanna talk about transferable skills. You've heard this term before. It is the skills and experience and expertise that you have gained throughout your career that you can take on to your next job, whether that job is in the same industry you have been working or whether you're transitioning to the space industry. These skills are valuable. You do not need to go back to school for an aerospace engineering degree unless you want to. You do not need to apply for entry level positions. In fact, you might be overqualified if you apply for low level positions and you have significant experience in another industry. It all depends on context. If you are an engineer in another industry, chances are you can work as an engineer in the space industry at the same level or level above where you are working right now. If you are working in a non STEM degree, that is non-science, technology, engineering, mathematics degree or, or field, then you might be surprised at how much is out there for you because it's not as well talked about. For example, if you have some kind of business or finance background, guess what? All of these space businesses are businesses. They are going to need people with business or business or finance or any other experience or skill set that a business requires. So you can pretty easily transfer from being in HR in another industry to HR in the space industry or a technical writer in another industry to a technical writer in the space industry. Yes, you might need to do some on the job learning or some prior your learning to your application, talk to me about space career coaching, but you can still make that switch because you have transferable skills, skills, expertise that you have gotten along the way that you can apply to a job in the space industry. The key here is messaging. Messaging is probably the number one problem that I see with the prospective clients and the clients that I work with. It is where people get stuck, where they don't know how to talk about their skills and experience and accomplishments and expertise in a way that the space-related reader cares about. The space-related reader does not know all the terms that you used in another industry unless they too come from that industry or unless it's carryover. So what you need to do is really focus on your message to the audience that you are going to be speaking with. That is to a space related audience, whether that's technical or non-technical. One thing I tell my clients to do is to take your resume and really generalize it in terms of the industry that you have been working in. So if you've been working in a certain industry and you talk about that industry and you talk about certain companies or certain processes or certain skill sets, uh, acronyms in that industry, then generalize that so that a reader from any industry can understand what your skill set is, can understand what your accomplishments are, can understand what you've done and what you're capable of doing. What you want is for the reader to be able to picture you in any industry, here specifically in the space industry. So if you are an engineer and you've worked mainly in submarines, you can talk about taking care of robust pressurized hardware in a remote location, which is completely applicable to space. People don't immediately think submarines, they think of hardware that is could be used in space. And so that's what you wanna do, is you wanna take whatever your expertise is. Perhaps you've been doing robotics for industrial purposes. Well, generalize that so that people can understand that you can do robotics in this function in any industry. And then the reader, if they're space related, will fill in the blank and say, oh, they can do robotics in the space industry. If you have done marketing in one industry that has specific jargon, then you should pretty well know that you need to speak to your audience. You, you should be able to market yourself to 
any industry and here specifically the space industry by getting rid of that jargon getting rid of anything that is industry specific as much as you can of course you're not probably going to be able to erase all of it but as much as possible generalize it and then fill in the blanks with keywords from job postings in the space industry so you want to take the language that the job posting is using and you want to apply that same language where applicable you know don't lie but where it's applicable use the language of the job posting in your resume or CV or cover letter. And that way, the reader can even better picture you working a job in the space sector and not only any job, but the job that they are hiring for. And that is how you take care of the messaging. You want to do that in your application, you want to do that in your networking, and you want to do that in your interviews. And all of that messaging is really key to explaining how even though you might not have space related experience, you have very applicable related experience that you could apply in a space setting. And finally, networking. Networking is an area that anybody can participate in, but people often feel that they don't know where to start or they don't feel worthy of talking to people. They don't want to bother people or whatever excuse that they have in their minds, justified or unjustified, as to why they don't dive into networking when they want to transition to the space industry. What you want to do is start contacting people who have the jobs that you're interested in to find out is the job really what I think it is? How is the company culture? What are they doing day to day? What does this job really look like? And the more that you understand the role, the more that you can say, oh, this is the role for me, or this is not the role for me, or this is the role for me, and here's how I can do it, even though I've never done this type of job before. Here's the role for me, and here's how I can do it, even though I've never worked in the space industry before. The better you know the job, the better you know the employer, the more that you can explain how you fit in. And the only way you're going to get that information is by talking with people. This is most likely not readily accessible online just by Googling or looking up YouTube videos. Most likely you're going to need to talk to people. So that could be networking online through LinkedIn or another method, or it could be um, networking in person, going to conferences or meetings or in some other way, meeting people that can talk to you about what they're doing, about the opportunities out there that you could fit into. So you want to talk to not only people who are working the types of jobs that you want to work in the types of employers that you want to work in, but also talk to people who have gone through a similar transition as you. If someone has come from another industry that you are working in and they've successfully transitioned to the space industry, well, ask them how they did that. Ask them any challenges that they came across and what they might recommend that you uh, study up on or the language that you use. Maybe even ask them to look over your resume and see if it makes sense to an outside reader who still understands your, your current industry, their previous industry. So that's the way that you really get more familiar with the space sector with your existing non-space background is by talk to people who are already working it, people who've either gone through a similar path or people who are working the types of jobs that you are working. And remember, these people aren't brilliant just because they're in the space industry. They've simply done something that you have not yet done. But the key there is yet. So do not self-reject. It's another area where a lot of people who are coming from outside the space industry, they assume that they cannot do this, so they don't even try. They assume they're going to get rejected so they don't even try. This is also where applying for entry-level roles comes in when you are not an entry-level candidate. So if you are concerned about the fact that you might get rejected, go ahead and apply anyway. Do your best because they are going to be the ones to make that decision and they might surprise you. You do need to have that confidence that you can do the job. So Think of it this way, when you look at a job posting, it's a wish list. It is not a, you must meet every single requirement. It is a wish list, this ideal candidate that doesn't exist. Unless it's written for a specific person, then that person exists. But in general, it is a wish list. And so even if you don't meet every single bit of criteria, every single thing that is on that job description, go ahead and apply anyway. Because the worst that's going to happen is they're going to say no. But then you can ask for feedback. You can refine your application. There's really no downside other than to a little bit of lost time that you can say was practice. But really, don't self-reject. That comes from a lack of self-worth. And that is also a big area that I see with my clients. They, they come from outside the industry, therefore they have this mentality that they're not worthy of being in the space industry, which has held them back for so long from even trying to get into it in the first place. Sound familiar? Please reach out to me. I'm happy to talk you through this. I'm happy to explain to you how you fit into the space industry. And here's where this doesn't work. There are certain areas that really do need space experience. If you are working on 
a specific subsection of a rocket that really does not exist anywhere else but rockets that are going to space, that is an area that you probably need that kind of expertise. You probably, you know, can't make that up from another job or another industry. You you really do need that expertise. Um, in that case, you either need on the job training or you need to go to school to get another degree, another certification. And that is always an option if you want to. I don't usually recommend to my clients that they go back to school for a certification or another degree. But if you feel you need to, if you really do want to switch over to astrophysics and you come from a completely non-science background, well, then you probably do need to go back to school because you really do need that experience. Another area this doesn't work is if there's a role that requires you to have vast experience in space already. This is usually uh, business development, sales, strategic partnerships, um, anything that requires you to have a large space network already built in where the company is going to be relying on your expertise already built in from day one. Um, and so if that's the job for you, well, you might need to work up to that. It might be that you can find a way in anyway and, and just learn on the job. And that's, that's fantastic if you do, but a lot of those jobs will require you to have already had a lot of time digging into the space sector, meeting people, making those connections. And any other role that is very technical that really does require you to have that direct experience already, then you might actually need to apply for an entry level role where entry level positions, they, they don't re they don't expect you to have a significant amount of experience. They might expect you to have certain schooling, which again goes back to you might need schooling to get those entry level jobs to get that very, very technical aerospace experience that you might need to work on rockets or satellites or whatever it is that is extremely specific to the space industry. But in a lot of cases, that's just not required. Here's another tricky part. If there is a company, a uh, hiring manager, a CEO, an executive company policy that is reluctant to hire outside the space industry, that's just company uh, culture that you're not gonna jive with. You're not gonna mesh. Um, so there are companies out there with that kind of bias, in which case I recommend you just don't don't bother with those companies. Don't go to somebody who's going to reject you out hand. Go to somebody who is going to accept the fact that you are an asset because you come from outside the space industry. The space industry is so insular that we actually need outside industry experience to grow, to innovate, to really understand what we don't know or to improve upon what we already are doing. And there are some biases that exist. I'm not going to tell you they don't because they certainly do that some people will not accept the fact that they need to look outside the space industry sometimes. And so for those particular cases, just just ignore them, go around them. That is not a reflection on you. That's a reflection on them. Don't let them stop you pursuing your space career dream. Getting a job in the space industry, it can be a longer process. If you are not already in the space industry, if you don't already have connections, if you come from a background that there are fewer jobs available, then this might take you a lot of time. So be prepared to go through a process. Don't get too upset over rejections. Just know that this is a process that will take time and don't let these rejections stop you from continuing on your path. If pursuing a space career is something that you are truly passionate about, but you are running into barriers, you're getting rejections, you're really struggling with how to even move forward, how to even understand what your options are, let alone your transferable skills, reach out to me. I'm happy to talk to you about how I might be able to assist you with pursuing the space career that you want. Just go to lauraforsick.com and reach out.